All right, what we're looking at here is a, uh, a demo unit of our Kibis Multiplex system. Um, this display has been set up to show you uh, very clearly and in, your, in front of you uh, what, um, what might be incorporated and installed throughout a transit bus. We are literally looking at an operational model of a bus here, and it is being controlled by the switches here and powered by the brains of our multiplex system and relayed information through our DMUX display. Uh, our ZR32, this is the central computer. This is the brains of the system. It works in a master satellite configuration. This being the master, as I said, the brains. And then uh, the MUX2B, this is a node, a working node. And that is a satellite to our master unit here. As well, these switch boxes are also nodes. They are user inputs to control and uh, affect the controls of our bus and our system here. And while our, our node would be the underneath handling the inputs and outputs of other functionality. We have a fault simulator, which we'll get to in a little bit, and then what you'd consider your typical uh, driver indicators here on a dashboard. So we're kind of looking at a simulated dashboard with the electronics that would be underneath in, in built into the chassis of the vehicle. We can literally control our bus here. For instance, I hit the door button. Our door opens, which is pretty neat. Um, we've got brake lights, reverse lights. Um, if we turn on our indicators, you can see the left-hand indicator. You probably can't see that. It's on the other side of the bus, but we put on our right-hand indicator, and we see that the, the turn signal is on, as well alerting the driver. We've got a horn, an audible noise, and as well, interior lights on the bus that you can see we're turning on and off here. This is all controlled by our system here. Our, our nodes are all talking to the central computer, which is pre-programmed with a uh, operating system that the user, the bus designer, or uh, whoever would actually create that program and uh, it tell how the input and output functionality uh, should all work together. This is a DMUX display. It is literally a display and a node in one. Uh, you can't see behind, but uh, this is built into a node that would look very much like our uh, MUX2B node. Uh, this allows the display to be a point of uh, connection and consolidation for inputs and outputs, uh, most commonly in the dashboard as it is usually located. So we're seeing a default view. This would be maybe an example of what uh, a driver would see as he is um, operating the vehicle. Uh, this, this DMUX display can literally uh, be programmed um, however you can imagine. You, uh, it allows the designer to upload his own bitmaps and menu structures, which we'll, we'll show you here in a second. Um, but uh, for the purposes of our demo, consider this as, as what we programmed in as the default view, showing the time of operation, the gear that the driver is in right now, and the outside temperature. So let me show you some other things about this display that make it so great. Um, it's very flexible. Again, whatever you can imagine can be displayed. Uh, the information that is displayed is a matter of just inputting into our central computer. So let's say we have access to temperatures and pressures and speeds and whatnot that we don't have individual gauges for. Uh, we want that information to then be displayed in gauge form. This is just an example of how the DMUX display can be used to show fuel level, temperature, and the different pressures uh, on the brake system. So that's uh, a very nice space-saving feature. As well, a popular technology is the hybrid diesel applications we're seeing. Here is uh, a, a example of how we programmed 
a, uh, a system to reflect the power drain on a powertrain of a hybrid system. You're literally showing the energy flow of, of the, the battery and the uh, consumption and the brake powering. Uh, the recharge bar is shown below. And it shows the point of where we are and the drain level, whether it's green, yellow, or red. It literally trains the driver to drive the vehicle more efficiently, showing how his operation of the pedal and brake and speeds will uh, drain the power, will actually uh, strain the powertrain and uh, affect the battery charge level. Uh, very often when a bus designer is programming a TPMS system or incorporating one into their vehicle, uh, it requires a separate display. Here we see that uh, we can have access to all this tire pressure information through the DMUX. By doing so, by tying that uh, TPMS system in through ours, you can literally eliminate the cost of this uh, redundant display. All that information can be accessed here. Uh, going up and showing another example of this, our HVAC system, showing the, the driver the, and allowing him control over to the speeds and the information of the cooling of the cabin. So one of the great features of our system is the ability for it to have access to the other can lines and the other subsystems that aren't necessarily part of the multiplex system and then uh, relay that information in the form of diagnostics. Let's just do a simplified example. This would be a part of the multiplex system. Let's indicate to the driver that there's a fault and he may say to himself, okay, it's an amber. We know that that is not critical. I see that it is a, a turn signal is out or some sort of bulb. Uh, he may not know exactly what it is, but when he's done for the day, he may alert the service mechanic that there was a fault when I was driving, and the service mechanic can then access our diagnostic menu. Now, you have any language available? We programmed in English, French, Chinese, and Spanish on the purposes of this display. I only speak English here, so we'll go in through English. Our passcode, we have zero, four zeros programmed in, but that is a uh, way of making it secure that only certain individuals could have access to critical data. I'll show you some of this other information in a bit, but for the purposes of our example, we're going to show the diagnostics. Uh, in the U.S. market, one of the things that's a very common way of diagnosing a problem with the multiplex system is to find the node itself and to locate the LEDs that would normally be on a node. They're not on ours, and I'll tell you why. But uh, these LEDs is in, in the U.S. market, it's common to show what the status of each input and output is. So if we know there's a fault, we dig into the panels underneath the bus and find that uh, the, the node that has a problem, and we can see on that LED uh, what the status is. You notice our nodes don't have those LEDs. The reason is we don't think it's necessary. We can simulate that LED display right here on the DMUX. You see in our I.O. test here, we've got access to the entire node network. We know our fault is on MUX 1.1 for the purposes of this example. Pulling that up, we see a visual representation of every input and output on that node. This is the inputs. We scroll down to the outputs, and we see this red light indicating there's a fault on connector A20. We know that is our left turn signal. I fix that fault. The fault has gone away. You see the light goes off, and there are no more errors. You can also run some tests here. Right-hand turn, indicator, light, and then the visual LED showing that all as well. Our horn is going through connector B12, we see. We open our doors, and we see that the open and close functions as part of the outputs there. So let's recreate our fault. 
Here we are, 820 again. That is one method. We think there's a better way. Accessing this menu, instead of actually making it complicated and showing or trying to find what output location and, and finding that LED, we can just tell you in plain English or any other language what that error is. Here we are. In the Vehicle Information Center, we see that there's a bulb out. It's the left-hand indicator, uh, the FMI code, meaning open load. We see that it's on MUX 1.1 on connector A20, the SPN code, and that it is an active error. So in plain English, uh, the service mechanic can see exactly where his problem is from the comfort and cleanliness of the driver's seat. No need to dig into any panels and find any nodes. All that information is available on the display. As well, let's say we fix our problem. The amber light goes away. We go into the active errors, we see the system is OK. Let's say that we want a history, what errors occurred during operation that may not be there now. This is in the error memory. And here we have the same error, the indicator, open load, SPN code, connector A20 on MUX 1.1, and that it's a passive error. As well, one of the great things, as I said previously, is how our central computer and the Kiba system can act as a gateway to all the different systems that might be running on, on our bus here. Let's say there's a gearbox ECU, um, a engine ECU, ABS, um, door modules. As long as those ECUs can communicate on to standard CAN protocols, J1939 or other compatible ones with our system, we can talk to them. So here in running data, we have as an example uh, the different systems here. We see engine, and we can literally pull up all the things that are going on on the engine, the different temperatures, pressures, the speed of the engine, the speed of the vehicle, any warnings, red or amber. Same in the gearbox. A retarder. And our ABS system. Wheel speeds, any active or passive errors. We have programmed this to include time and date, which can be set the software version that is on, allowing quick and easy access to uh, the information on what is powering this, this bus and this our multiplex system and whether or not the software needs to be updated, what revision it's on. This is all information that used to be very difficult to access at times. Um, documentation that was lost or could be misplaced can now be easily pulled up simply through our display.